thank you to the St. Peter's Choir and also a big thank you to the young gentlemen, talented young musicians over here from the UMKC Conservatory of Music. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to spring in Kansas City. There's a little chill in the air. We think that's coming up from Houston, but it's supposed to get a little warmer as the day goes on. How about it? Go Royals, right? Go Royal. Well, like, like, uh, like the Royals, Kansas City is the city that never quits. We rejuvenate ourselves over the winter, and we blossom again in the spring. And we know it's not really spring until our fantastic and beautiful fountains come to life. It's when our juices start flowing, it's when uh, the dogwoods bloom, and when our noses start itching. We know it's, it's spring, right? Well, those of us with the uh, City of Fountains Foundation have been itching for Fountain Day for exactly a year now. And thanks to some amazing engineering and some creative reconstruction, the William Volker Memorial Fountain and the long, quiet waterfall are about to roar again. At one point, we didn't think uh, we'd be standing here today. So much work needed to be done, and so much money, more than a million dollars, needed to be raised. So let's start Fountain Day 2016 by thanking some people who made this possible today. That's the Hall Family Foundation. I believe there's Bill Hall from Hall Family Foundation. Thank you all. From the uh, KCPNL Fund, somebody here from KCPL. And then. The, the Muriel McBrien, McBrien Coffin Foundation and the Ewing Coffin, Ewing, Mar Ewing Marion Coffin Foundation. Thanks to them, the engineering and the construction team and Kansas City's winning Parks and Recreation Department for making this day and the rejuvenation of this fountain and waterfall possible. And with that, please welcome Kansas City Par Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioner, Mr. Dave Mecklenburg. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I'm filling in for John Paul Sharon, the president of the, <laughs> yay, <laughs> the, the president of the uh, Parks Board uh, couldn't be here today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize uh, past commissioners who really aren't past commissioner, once commissioner, always commissioner. Uh, Anita Gorman, Carl DeCapo, and Ann Garney. A special thanks to Anita, who I kind of looked up to being a Northlander, and she was kind of the one that laid the way for me to get on the uh, Parks Board, and I'm, I'm really great, great, uh, gratified for that. Uh, with me today also is Mary Jane Judy, a current commissioner. Kansas City is the city of fountains. This is a great celebration for us each year to kick off the spring and summer season. Uh, we're so proud of the reputation that the city has for its wonderful fountains. We're so thankful for the City of Fountains Foundation for their help and our many other partners that we have throughout the city and throughout the year to maintain this beautiful parks system. We as commissioners kind of oversee it and kind of step aside, but the person who really does it, I'd like to introduce to you, Mr. Mark McHenry, Director of Parks and Recreation. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, appreciate the introduction. Um, Dave, when he was appointed by Mayor James uh, back in 2011, was the 100th member of the Park Board over our 126 years period of time. 60 years ago prior to that, which would have been 1951, uh, the mayor appointed Frank Tice to the Park Board. At that time, uh, Mr. Tice ultimately went to serve as a 13-year member of the Park Board and the park we're in today is named for Frank Tice. He uh, was instrumental in a large variety of activities in his community and his leadership made uh, great strides at that period of time. And there again, this 14-acre park that we stand today stands here in his memory, Frank Tice. The fountain we're about to rededicate is named for uh, William Volker. Uh, William Volker was a pillar in our community. He was very generous with his time and his talent and his resources. Uh, he was born in Germany in 1882. He moved to Kansas City, and when he came to Kansas City, he was very instrumental in our community. Uh, he was one of the original uh, trustees at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Uh, he helped found UMKC, so strange not coincidence that he's actually got a fountain here in his honor since there again, the Nelson just to the north of us and UMKC is just to the south of us. He also served 14 years on the Kansas Missouri School Board. 
Uh, he was also one that started up the uh, University of Kansas City, which now became UMKC. And he was also very instrumental in what was called the German Hospital, then it became Research Medical Center and gave almost two and a half million dollars to that particular hospital. So you can see Mr. Volker was a big part of our community. This fountain, when it was first uh, dedicated, was in 1958, and it was actually standing right above where we are today. Uh, the creek was closed at this point. There was a roof over the creek, and the fountain sat up on top of it. And then in 1994, when we were doing the Brush Creek flood improvements, we had to open up this channel, and by doing that, the fountain had to move to the south bank, and that's where it's stood since that time in 1994. The uh, sculpture of the fountain uh, is done by a gentleman named Carl Millis. Uh, Carl is from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, the sculptures that stand in the middle of it show uh, St. Martin of Tours. He's a patron saint of France. And he was uh, traveling in the Armenians in 332 AD. And he came across a beggar in need of warmth. And so he pulled out his saber and he cut off part of his coat and gave it to that uh, beggar as a form of keeping him warm. Uh, and there's two angels also as part of the sculpture. One is, if you look up at the angels on the sculpture, uh, one is actually playing a flute have to be playing it backwards for a little humor. And the other one is reaching out with her arm and it's got a wristwatch. So if you can imagine 332 AD wearing a wristwatch, of course. So the little bit of humor that was done by Carl Mills is part of that. 43 years ago is when we formed our partnership with the City of Founds Foundation. And as indicated by Pat, uh, it's been a great partnership to promote and uh, put KC on the map as the City of Founds Foundation. The few staff I want to recognize here today are led by uh, Jocelyn Ball, who is our project manager. Jocelyn's back over here. Uh, Pat McNamara, uh, Pat's somewhere. He's our maintenance operations guy. He's been a big part of this. Uh, Lewis Cummings, who is our district manager for this area. Uh, Travis Kiefer, our head of planning design and engineering. And Terry Reinard, I see up here in the about the middle chair there. She's our deputy director for our department. And then, of course, the great work by Heidi Downer and her uh, marketing management team to make all this possible today. In your programs, you'll see a uh, feast of fountains that are going to be occurring throughout the summer months. Uh, the first one's going to be back here on May 12th at the Volker Fountain, uh, June 16th at the Liberty Memorial, July 14th at the Northland Fountain in the Need to Be Gorman Park, uh, July 11, or August 11th at the Spirit of Freedom Fountain, and September 8th at the Concourse Fountain up in the Northeast area. I'm going to turn the podium back to Pat. Thank you, Mark. You know, two springs ago, the City of Fountains Foundation uh, was celebrating its first contributions to our Wish Upon a Fountain campaign. Our goal was to raise the dollars needed to restore and preserve eight of Kansas City's iconic fountains that were most in need of repairs, like lighting and safety upgrades. The, I'm, I'm proud to say that the Wish Upon a Fountain campaign has now raised more than $3 million and has checked seven of those eight fountains off of our list. The last being the landmark Westside Fountain, which needs some major repairs and facelift. And with your help by next year at this time, we will have that checked off our list as well. And at this time, though, I'd like to, uh, would the board members of the City of Fountains Foundation please stand up and wave your hands, be recognized. We have Pat Dunn, who's a treasurer. David Say, who's tre uh, is a treasurer. I'm sorry, James Bernard, Jr., is treasurer. David Say, I have both of you as treasurer, so something's wrong there. It takes a lot to watch $3 million. Uh, uh, board members are Ralph Caro, Charles Casey Cassius, up here on front, Douglas Coe, and Kansas City's promoter and fundraiser supreme, Mr. Carl J. DiCapo, Ann Garney, Ollie Gates, the inimitable Anita B. Gorman, also up here, Heather Paxton, David P. Ross, David Schwartz, Joni Shields, and Joe Viles. And I have to say, we're going to, uh, Kay Callison, you're out there somewhere, we're making you an honorary City of Fountains board member. <laughs> And Peggy Farrell, our executive assistant, who does all the work that we're supposed to be doing all the time. But on this project, this one behind us, is our biggest and perhaps most challenging renovation. It's because of the skill and tenacity of one particular board member that's proved to be absolutely invaluable. And board member and past president Casey Cassius is a principal with BNIM, 
Casey with the infinite patience and support of his colleagues at BNIM gave countless hours and tons of brain power to see the extreme makeover of the William Volcker Fountain possible. Casey. Thank you all for being here today. I want to share when I start a little history about the City of Fountains Foundation. In 1973, Hallmark executive Harold Rice and his wife Peggy were on a vacation in Rome, Italy. And as the story that I've heard at least, they were um, sitting near the Trevi Fountain having a glass of wine, which of course that's what you should do if you're there, and, and enjoying the beauty of the fountain. And they started talking about the importance of the fountains in Kansas City. And at that time, there certainly weren't 48 fountains in the system, but, but they were struck by the need to set up an organization that would help fund, maintain, provide an endowment for the fountains in Kansas City. And when they got back to Kansas City, um, Harold quickly got together with another num members of the city and set up the City of Fountains Foundation later that year, 43 years ago. Today, we've collected millions of dollars on behalf of the city fountains and it's been a wonderful partnership with the parks and recreation department as pat mentioned the volker fountain has been a very interesting undertaking when we started we thought we would dedicate this fountain last july 4th then it got moved to august and maybe labor day and then when that passed and we kept finding more issues in the fountain we decided we needed to slow down and make sure we got it right um, patience, resilience, and teamwork, I think, were the key word bywords for the project. At the end of the day, we've only been successful because of our partners, starting with those of you who provided the donations and the contributions to let it happen, but also our partners in design and construction. We absolutely couldn't have done it without their persistence and uh, ability to see beyond the problems that happened each and every day. As Mark alluded to, the, the fountain, when it was envisioned by the uh, Corps of Engineers back uh, following the flooding, um, they had this brilliant idea to be the recycler and not use potable water. So they, instead of using fresh water, they used water from Brush Creek. So they were pulling water from Brush Creek. And for any of us who live in Kansas City, we know that's not the purest water. And fountains kind of like water that isn't dirty, that isn't filled with siltation or whatever else. And so from literally the day it started, the fountain was a struggle for Parks Department to keep the filtration clean, the pumps running, the pipes not silted full. And over the 20 or so years it operated, each and every year it required more and more tender loving care. And about five years ago it just died. And the city hasn't been able to address it, so when we started this campaign, this was the single most important project on our list to make sure we got it up and running again. So those five years weren't kind. The sludge that was in the pipes um, effectively became concrete, as we discovered, and so we were faced with replacing a lot more pipes than we originally anticipated. Despite all the careful early planning, review of the drawings, review of the as-built drawings, which if those of you know, as-built drawings generally are supposed to tell you how it was constructed, but the Burns and McDonald team and Jay Dunn team can tell you, not so much so in this case. There were a lot of surprises along the way. There were concealed issues over and over again. It was very much an iterative process until we got the pumps running last I think it was in late July or early August before we actually had the pumps running. Only then did we start to know the true nature of what we were facing. Um, the number of clog pipes, we'd fix the clog, then we'd run the pump again, and then we'd see the next clog, then we'd see the next broken pipe, and on and on. So I'm telling you this story not so much as a negative, but rather as a real positive scenario. It really talked a lot about the tenaciousness of our team, of the designers and contractors who came and worked together to solve problems, not to point fingers, not to get frustrated, but they were always working together towards one common goal, and that was to get Volker back up and running again. I'd first really like to thank Greg Graves and Burns and McDonald for their willingness. Um, I'm not 
throw Anita into this. Other than Bill Dunn, I don't know of anyone in this community who when you see their name on your phone, you kind of know, uh-oh, I'm in trouble because I can't say no. Well, Greg got one of those calls from Anita and quickly said, yes, we'll design your fountain and we'll do it on a pro bono basis. And understand, that's when he thought he was going to be done in July 4th of last year. So he bit off a little more than I think they thought. I'd really like to recognize their design team. And I know Kirk Malachek, who was their project manager, is here in the back row. Um, and their lead designers, Craig Koenig and Bill Nash, Time and again, they stepped up. They never got um, frustrated. They always uh, came out when we had problems in the field to address them. Um, and for me, they couldn't have been a better design partner for this project. They never cried foul. They never expressed any frustration. They just rolled up their sleeves and got the job done. Similarly, um, J.E. Dunn and Bill Dunn Sr. came on to the team very early on and not just for Volker Fountain but for all eight fountains that we're undertaking on this project they're acting as the uh, general contractor on, similarly on a, on a no-cost basis so I can't say enough for them <laughs> while I don't see any of these folks in the audience I'm going to read their names because it's important um, I'd like to specifically recognize Mike Dooley who's the general superintendent for the project um, Willis Bowers, who's the overall general superintendent for about a third of Jay Dunn's operations here in Kansas City. Willis um, is one of those people who just finds common sense answers to difficult problems. And time and again, he would show up at our meetings and help us kind of get beyond the engineering of how we might do it and say, well, what if we try this? It'll be a lot less expensive and we were able to do that frequently. And finally, Eric Herman and Jim Coulter, who I've had the privilege of working with now on multiple fountains in the city, um, including the Block Fountain, which we're currently renovating, which will hopefully um, come Memorial Day of this year, be up, up and operational again. All these gentlemen made a huge difference in making this project successful. Jay Dunn was assisted by three contractors I'd like to recognize, West Hughes Electric, Rodriguez Mechanical, and Grunfos Pumps. All these companies just went above and beyond time and again. Uh, just this past weekend, they were all waiting in the water out here, making sure everything worked for today. Um, and uh, I promise you that water is quite cold still. And lastly, I want to acknowledge the relationship that City of Fountains has had with um, Parks and Recreation over the years. This has really been a wonderful partnership. Um, I don't think Parks and Recreation gets the credit they deserve when they take on these additional projects above and beyond their normal workload. This was not an easy task, um, let alone getting the sculptures re restored and renovated, conserved if you will, then working on the fountains and doing her normal job. Our project manager, Jocelyn Ball Edson, who's a senior landscape architect with Parks and Rec, was our day-to-day -day leader on the project. And Jocelyn, if you're here, if you would let us know, thank you so much for all you did. And to all the board members, thank you for the additional funding that we received through the, through the course of this project because it was not insignificant and it really made a difference. And to Mark McHenry, who has just been such a good steward of all the parklands for, gosh, a long time. 40 years plus, yeah, um, it was truly a team effort. Um, it was a great public-private partnership in the truest sense of the word. Um, one other thing before I get off, I did want to recognize John Kemper, who's sitting here in the front row, who has been helping us with parks and landscape and fountains as well. And Jonathan, thank you for all you've done. And with that, I would like to ask Greg Graves to come up and say a few words. Thanks. We promise just one more and then we'll turn this baby on. Uh, it's true, when Anita Gorman calls, your choices are hide or say yes. The other little point you might want to know is when Anita Gorman calls and says, I just need a little of your help, she needs a lot of your help. But the reason you do it is no one loves this town in its history more than Anita Gorman.
loves this town. And so when you get a chance to make this town just a little better in her name, you just step up and do it. I have the great honor today to represent the many corporations who have donated to this project, not just the employee owners of Burns and Mac, and some of, some of the great foundations in the history of this city who are led by great entrepreneurs like William T. Kemper or Joyce Hall or Ewing Kaufman, who have always made this city great. And when you think about the great foundations and the, and the largest corporations of this city, these people recognize that when great blessings come to you, much is expected and a lot of duty follows. And I've never seen them shy away from the opportunities to make our city a more prosperous city, a more just city, a city where everyone has a fighting chance. But every once in a while, not every day, but every once in a while, you get the true joy of working on a project or donating to a project that makes it a more beautiful city, that great jewel in America's heartland. And so today, represented by the Great Fountains uh, Foundation, by the incredible men and women of the Water Department and the uh, Parks and Recreation Department, and then those foundations that I mentioned, or corporations like our partnership on this project with J.E. Dunn. Mr. Dunn, it was an honor to work with your company again. And finally, on behalf of the 5,500 employee owners of Burns and McDonald, let's make one more Anita Gorman dream come true. Pat? Thank you, Greg. You know, standing here under this royal blue sky, I think we're all kind of reminded of that day last November when the whole entire city and about 300,000 of our closest friends gathered around the, the block fountain at Union Station to celebrate the Royals' victory in a World Series. And perhaps you remember those fabulous Home Sweet Home banners that I was going to go get one, but there was 10,000 people between me and the, and the, and the vending stand. But that was, those were brought to us by the folks at the Kansas City communications department at Kansas City City Hall. And Jennifer Roche has a, a gift for us. Jennifer? Pat, thank you so much. Uh -huh. On behalf of the city of Kansas City, Missouri, we're here to present a check for $9,000 to the City of Fountains Foundation. This check has been made possible by the loyal Royals fans who purchased those banners that are now hanging on Grand. You can see them today if you drive down Grand. And a portion of those proceeds here are for you um, to help maintain and restore Kansas City's fountains. Thank you. Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. Carl, would you like to say a word? As chairman of the restoration of the fountains some four or five years ago, uh, I'm not the dumbest person in the world, and I got my sister, Anita Gorman, to help me with this. Uh, Peggy, would you stand, please? This young lady with the brains of all of ours, she's our director of this, and nobody, I wanted to enjoy that. Uh, the first thing I did, I got Bill Dunn when I, when I made me chairman, and I had a young lady sitting over here, uh, Kay Callison, God bless her. Kay, I was close to her mother, I mean her father and her, and all of them in the family, and I went to her and I said, Kay, we really need help with the fountain that everyone sees and everyone knows is Kansas City. And by doing that, and then this young man here, Jonathan, we sat here one day, Anita and I, and, and Mark McHenry and Pat, we went up and said, we need help. Before we left, he took care of two fountains in one park. That's the kind of guy he's looking for. Again, again, when you stop and understand, what we said was, it's not just the people, it's the people who live here in Kansas City. Because the fact that every time they say this is the city of city of fountains, and we had 46 fountains and we had 40 of them that didn't work. We had 40 of them that didn't work. So now, with the help from all the gentlemen and the ladies that you sit behind me, and the people out there, God bless you all. God bless you all. You know, nobody knows what Kansas City does because this is the greatest city in the United States. And now I'll bring Sophia up, please. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you, Carl. Now it's time to officially welcome spring to Kansas City, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ask Mr. Carl DeCapo and Sofia Dominguez, who happens to be Miss City of Fountains, who will be competing in the Miss Missouri pageant coming up. And I must say that uh, she, is, uh, Sofia, is a student at Park Hill, South. Park Hill South. I just messed that up. <laughs> and I know there's a difference. Um, but but what she does as part of her mission as uh, as our representing the the city of Fountains is advocate for adults with mental illnesses. So if you two will step to the detonator, and I and I'd ask the rest of everybody to stand up. And Heidi, would you mind coming up and lead us in a countdown and keep your eyes peeled behind us? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. 